Our eighth and final valid deductive pattern is called the constructive dilemma. And this one actually is a little confusing. Let's walk through it together. The first line is two if-then statements. P implies Q and R implies S. In the second line, we learn that one of these two ifs is true. What do you think follows from that? Well, if one of these two ifs is true, then we can conclude one of these two thens must be true. This is the constructive dilemma. You're given two if-then statements. You're then told that at least one of these two things is true. What does that mean? At least one of these two things must be true. So, imagine, uh, or maybe you bet on football, right? And let's say you know if the Jets win, you win $5. And if the Giants win, you win $10. And then a friend of yours tells you, I don't remember which, but I know at least one of them won. Either the Jets won or the Giants won. What would you think to yourself? You'd say, well, I won either $5 or $10. Maybe I won both. That's the constructive dilemma, right? If the Jets win, you win $5. And if the Giants win, you win 10. Someone tells you that either the Jets or Giants won, maybe both. That means you won $5 or $10, maybe both. That's the constructive dilemma. So here's another example of the constructive dilemma. We have two if-then statements. Not E implies X and A implies T or L. We're then told that one of these two ifs is the case at least. Well, that means that one of these two thens has to be the case. Let's try using it in a proof. Line 1 tells us if A is true, then B is true. Line 2 tells us if not E is the case, then T is the case. Line 3 tells us that either A or not E is the case. Our conclusion is that B or T or Z is true. So, what does the constructive dilemma allow us to do? The constructive dilemma allows us to use A or not E to get B or T. And in order to do that properly, however, we're going to put these two lines together so it looks just like it did when I showed it to you a second ago. We're going to take lines 1 and 2 and put them together in a conjunction. A implies B, and not E implies T. This is lines 1 and 2 in a conjunction. Okay. Now that we have our two if-then statements together, we can use A or not E to get B or T. That is the constructive dilemma on lines three and four. Now, in the conclusion, you're asked to, demo you're asked, uh, to conclude that B or T is the case, or Z. Now notice that Z doesn't occur anywhere in this proof. So what are you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to use addition. If B or T is true, and we've established B or T is in fact true, then we are entitled to say B or T or anything we want. That's what addition does. If we know something, we can say that something or whatever we want to add. So we're going to use addition on line five, and that gets us to our conclusion. So these are all eight of our 
deductive patterns, and that's where we're stopping. So with these eight patterns, we can do all sorts of proofs. I'm going to do one more tutorial with you where we have to translate a problem into symbolic logic and then figure out what the proof is. The key to this stuff is just going to be practicing over and over and over this week so you can do well in the quiz.